and welcome to the next episode of my series in the Landscape Photographer Profiles and today I'm really excited because I get to shoot with another photographer who actually is quite interesting from his landscapes. He doesn't just shoot landscapes, he shoots landscapes with a human element, he does model photography. His name is Robert Zegenfuss and he is originally from the USA, he lives in Kenmare and he's travelled here today to Cork to meet with me and he's with the lovely Anna and we're going to uh, go take some shots today. I'll follow the usual um, sequence that I normally do. I'll ask him some five questions, you'll get to see those answers. And then we'll show as well three shots of today that he'll actually uh, have taken at the end of this episode. So come join me and we'll get to know more about Robert and what makes him tick from a photographer and a model landscape photographer at that. Ta-da! <laughs> Hello, I'm Robert. I'm a salesman stroke photographer, stroke importer, stroke American, stroke Irish, stroke everything else. Um, and I love to do photography. Um, and the one thing I actually love to do more than anything is to do, is to incorporate landscapes with model photography, portrait photography, things like that. It's, um, it just adds certain depth to photos for me. I just like to do it. I like to capture different poses, different, um, you know, outfits, things like that. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, you learn an awful lot through trial and error. Well, the gear of me now is a, I have a Canon 5D Mark III, and I have also got a 7D uh, Mark II. Uh, most of the time for, for model or for portrait photography, we would use the um, 5D Mark III with the 70 to 200 lens, because it's actually a phenomenal glass lens from Canon, which picks up um, portrait photography fantastic. It picks up colors. It gets great depth of field and everything like that. So it's my go-to lens of choice when I'm doing this kind of photography. Sometimes you do have to use, I do have a, um, a 24 to 70 millimeter uh, Canon as well, which I use for sort of doing more of the landscape, sort of wide angle, you know, kind of shots that I would do. But as I said, this is the tried and true. The, this is my beast, my best friend. We would also kind of tend to bring props, things like this we can use for shoots as well, we can, uh, blankets. Um, scarfs, umbrellas, tables, chairs, things like that that we tend to kind of set up in the, you know, in the natural light. Don't use reflectors or anything like that. That's my own personal choice. I prefer to, um, to shoot everything in natural light um, and to be able to use the controls of the camera um, to be able to take a, as I said, more natural. I find that an awful lot of the, nat the fake lighting and the reflectors tend to make things look a little bit fake in my opinion. So that's why I tend to just try to work with what we have at the moment. And uh, that's pretty much it. We also have, I also use my drone from time to time. I have a, a Mavic Pro as well that we use. And um, outside of that, that's pretty much everything else is my bag. Basically speaking, in a situation like this, I know the area that I'm going to and there's specific areas that I would go, but depending on light, as I said, I like to shoot with natural light. What we'll do is we'll take the model, we'll put them next to a piece or of, of some part of landscape behind her, and we'll try and set up a pose. I will then drop back, start to take my readings on the lighting to see what works best for a photograph. I usually take three or four shots, get my idea of where I need to be for exposure point of view and from an ISO and everything. And then we'll, uh, once we get that reading, we then work into starting a basically a photo shoot okay so what i want you to do is with the light being behind you i want you to basically stand there with your head with your hand with your head up against the the tree yeah. with your hands like that kind of like you're hugging the tree okay and then what i'm gonna do is a drop back so what we'll do now is we'll take a couple of test shots and we'll uh, get the light right for to do this Okay, now you see with the sun coming out, it's getting that little bit brighter, so we have to... And we've got a dog. And that's perfect. Don't, you know, you have, have, you have some compassion for the, the model. The model is actually doing a favor for you. They are, you know, coming out and, and they're working with you and, you know, just try to be nice, have fun with it. Don't overthink it. Don't, and, and as well as that with models, don't boss them around. 
you know, don't tell them, you know, try to work together and do things that, that work with the two of you. Build up a rapport, build up a relationship. And I'm telling you, you'll, it'll work because you will get the type of, the type of photos that you want, the, the, um, the emotion in the photographs, things like that. Uh, and it's, it's just something that you, people really need to work on. I know if, I've heard stories of people that have had, you know, some photographers just become too machine-like. You have to make it as a relationship and as, as just have a bit of fun with it because it's the best way to actually get the most out of the photographs of what you're trying to get. And as well as that, the other little bit of advice, try to make sure that you work in the thirds and you know build your models in on the thirds on either one of the sides of the camera or right down in the center and still work with your portrait photography as you would any landscape photography in your rule of thirds. And if you can do that, then you're on the way to being able to take half decent portrait model photography. It's a very exhilarating experience. It actually kind of gets you out in the open. You get hiking, you can enjoy the, the nature, things around you, as well as meeting new people and networking and things like that. And uh, it's just, you know, it, it gives me an awful lot of fulfillment in life doing what I do. Um, and it, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I could recommend to anybody to pick up a camera, go out and learn, start, start small and work your way up from there. And, it does be it does it can be a very very expensive um, hobby though because you think you have the camera that'll do what you want it to do and then you got to get the lenses and then you got to get the filters and then you got to get a better camera and somebody else then takes a different shot and you want to get that shot and the only way you can get that shot is from a different from a different camera a different type of camera i know they say an awful lot of it's the photographer in the eye of the photographer but an awful lot of the equipment does have an awful lot to do with it as well and uh it's just it is it's a very fun expensive hobby but it's uh it's it can it can definitely change your life I really enjoyed that interview with Robert. I think it was something that was completely different as well to the other seven episodes that I've done of this series. And what made it completely different as well, as I said from the outset, is the introduction of a human element in the model. And I really enjoyed Robert's um, best advice as well, you know, just to relax, make the model feel at home and relax because as he says, you know, she's there to help you out and if she's relaxed, you'll get the best out of the, um, uh, the photo shoot so thanks very much for watching this episode i do hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed making it um like i said at the beginning now what will follow here is three images from robert shoot here today and um i'll put robert's details as well below here so please do give him a like a like um and uh, as always thanks very much if you enjoy the content please do hit that subscribe button please do like and share and comment and until the next time shlong gafol <laughs>